and check if the stream's up. Oh, it is. I thought I was on the VOD. Test. Oh, it is. I thought I was on the VOD. Test. Okay, it's working. Alright. So, um, I'm going to be commentating this game I played as a uh, Quaswex Invoker. I believe it was in the high skill bracket, not the very high, but yeah, I went Quaswex this game. I ended up 11-2 and some odd amount of assists. Primary spells I use this game, I use three big ones, Tornado, Cold Snap, and EMP. Those were the primaries, and you're going to mainly be seeing them. Uh, in this, I will be going over how I mid, how I follow up after mid, and how I uh, kind of just approach Quaswex Invoker in general. So, let's go. We have a pause here at the beginning. Someone, I have no idea why. <laughs> but yeah, let's go over item build real quick. Uh, I go Tango, Blades of Attack, Iron Branch. There's no real rhyme or reason to the Iron Branch. I'll just say that right now. But the Blades of Attack and Tangos are very important. Now let me slow it down here. I really prefer Tangos on Quaswex Invoker. Hell, any, any Invoker build. I don't like Salves on Invoker. I just don't think you should ever be in that position where you actually need a Salve. If, no matter what build you're going, you're going to have points in Quas. So let me slow it down for a second here. Because shit's going to happen. So, let me pause it instead. Um, tango's because... Tango's combined with Quas early game are ridiculous. The, the amount of regen you get out of it is just so absurdly cost effective. It's It should be unquestionable to get them. Blades of Attack is pretty simple. It helps you last hit early game because, as you can see, base damage is 43. That's awful. Look at that. Razor, who has 55 and a very good attack animation. And 55 isn't that high, honestly. So, if you're starting out on Voker, Quaswex, you're going to have no attack damage. It's a different story for Quas Exhort because you get Exhort and you get a shitload of damage early game. Different story. But I like to get the Blaze of Attack early. It gives you that plus 9 damage. Makes last hitting just that much easier. And last hitting as Invoker is extremely important. More so important than someone like, uh, shit, Storm Spirit or someone. So, Tango, Blades of Attack, Iron Branch. Blades of Attack eventually builds in the Phase Boots, which you should only get on Quaswex Invoker, but that's another, that's another time. So starting off mid here, uh, I notice it's Razor. Not a very common mid. You're not going to be going up against Razor mid a lot. Uh, I've done it before, and typically Invoker, I'd say it's like a 7-3 to three match in favor of Invoker. So... Here, you can see on the mini-map right there, Venge is looking for some ganks. So, I'm going to give up first blood here, but Venge is going to die in the process. Uh, really nothing I could do about this. I mean, I really don't expect level 1 ganks in uh, pub games. So, I give up first blood here. Venge thinks she'll get the last hit on me. She doesn't. And she ends up dying to tower. I don't get any gold or EXP from that, so that sucks. And Razor gets the first blood with his Q. Again, nothing I can really do about that with no wards. So, immediately, immediately, your first instinct, if you die mid, should be get back in lane. Okay? If you don't have money for a TP, just run the mid. Just straight up book it. Okay? Early game, pre-level 6, you always need to be in mid lane. Because you do not want to get out leveled by your opponent. You just don't want that happening. If that happens, you're going to lose mid. You're going to be ineffective for the rest of the game, and that's going to be a detriment to your team. So I immediately respawn, immediately buy a TP, and get back into lane. Now, I try and go for Razor there. I thought I might get him or something. Now, that first blood didn't really work out for him so well. Sure, he got 400 gold. Sure, he has, like, enough for boots right now. But I'm going to have pretty much free farm for the next minute or so. He can't do anything to me. I have full HP. I'm level 2. I got Invoke up. You know, nothing can really happen to me here. So, yes, I did die. I did not lose money. Well, okay, I lost 100 gold. That's nothing, really. Well, 200, really, for the TP and the buyback. So, yeah, I did lose a pretty decent amount of gold. But I immediately got back in the lane. That's going to give me some free farm time because Razor is so low. And I'm going to get some EXP, and the lane is basically going to even out. So, if you get first blooded mid, don't fret about it. It's not that big of a deal. 
unless it's like Shadow Fiend or something, and then you're 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 in trouble then. But as you can see, I'm just trying to last it here. Last hitting his Quas Wax Invoker is pretty difficult early game. Uh, I'm still really bad at it. My creep score is actually pretty sad. Now Razor shows up. He ate some tangos, but notice he's half HP. So I spot this. I go in for the cold snap. And here is very important. Notice. Let me reverse it for a second. This is your bread and butter combo. Holy shit, that's like... This is your bread and butter combo. Plain and simple. It's cold snapping the tornado. Let's get to that point. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now right here. Cold snap 101. If he is ever, ever overextended, like past river or whatever, up on your base, and you have creeps incoming that will potentially target him, always cold snap. It will do ridiculous amounts of damage. Like, look at here. Look how much damage I inflict with just this one cold snap. So I cold snap. Hit. Hit. Then I get one last hit. And notice, I wait for the cold snap to run out. You really want to do that. You want to get as many hits as you can on that cold snap before going to your tornado. So here I throw out the tornado. Hit some. Does decent damage, and I get two last hits to finish him off. And that kill is huge. Okay? That kill is gigantic, actually. Now I get free farm. Uncontested farm. And I got EXP from the kill. I got gold from the kill, you know? I'm in... I'm really good. And I can just regen my HP, no problem. So he comes back to the lane, and I believe nothing really special happens here. He tries to get me, he can't though. I'm Invoker. I got... got that mad regen. Here you see that, what I was talking about earlier, that ridiculous regen coming to play. 11.2 regen of the game is just broken. So we're gonna fast forward through this, nothing really special happens. Ganks bottom. And, okay, I'll take note of this too. I'm playing really reserved this game. I usually play really reserved with Invoker in general. Not so much with Quox Sort, but Quox Wax I play really reserved. But here, I'm playing ridiculously safe because I know Venge is roaming and we don't have wards. So I'm playing really safe. I'm staying. I really don't want to push past River. Only for a kill or something, or if I know Venge is bottom, or I know where everyone is. You know, I, I really don't want to push past River. And that comes into play later. So fast forward, you know, nothing really happening. Farm, farm, farm. You want to get those last hits in. Last hitting is really important middle. Not so much important side lanes, unless you're a carrier, of course. But middle is really important. Standard... Standard stuff. Nothing happening here. Now at 985 gold, I think the cap is 950. At 950 gold, you want to buy your face boots. You don't want treads on Quaswax. It's just not worth it. The bonus move speed you get from phase and the bonus damage really helps. Because you're not going to be getting any other sort of attack damage boosts. Especially if you go like Aghanims or something. <coughs> So that plus 24 damage or whatever it is, is really helpful. The speed boost as well. You can outrun and chase down anyone in the game with that. So standard, standard. I think Venge comes down for gank soon, or she ganks top. Last hitting, blah blah blah, standard, standard. There I try and go for a kill, nothing comes of it though. And you notice my boots right there. Get it as soon as possible, because boots on Invoker are so important. Now, I'm gonna pause it for a second. Well, no, let's let it run. Next item I'm gonna get is Force Staff, and if you do not get Force Staff on Invoker, you are playing him objectively wrong. Force Staff is key on Invoker. It's just about as important as Agonims. It's just ridiculous. And let me pause so I can go into depth. Invoker is very unkillable as it is. He has Tornado, he has Cold Snap, he has Ghost Walk, he has Ice Wall, he has Deafening Blast. All those kind of prevent people from trying to kill him. So couple with that, a reliable escape method. Because all those aren't necessarily reliable. You have to hit those. Force Staff, you just have to turn away and, you know, activate Force Staff and go. So couple that, a reliable getaway with semi-reliable getaways. And you have a nearly unkillable character. 
Four staff allows you. Not only does it give you, you know, ten, uh, ten mag, sorry, ten int, um, like nine damage and some attack speed off of that. Also gives you that great. It gives you the ability to be really aggressive because not only are you, you know, Quasox Invoker, you're gonna be running down bitches everywhere, but you also have a nice little faux blink in your inventory as well now. So four staff is just so key on Invoker. You should always get it second or first, like on um. Quas Rex, I always get it after treads. Always, always, always. I will never get anything in front of it. And it might even be a good idea to rush it sometimes, get it before treads. But that's Quas Rex Sword. So here, I notice you can see me right there. I am not going past that river. Because I know. I don't know that Venge is right here, but I do know Venge is somewhere in this area. I know she's somewhere hiding over here. Oh, I can't draw. Demon. Oh well. I know she's somewhere in that area. So I'm not moving past the river because I know if I do, I'm dead. And that's just basic map awareness. So fast forward. Ben will try and run in and do something. Nothing happens though. All things fall. Right here. Nothing comes of it. They just try and get me. They can't though. So she heads bottom. Try and go for another kill here. Don't get it because I fuck up my can my animation canceling. Now Razor TP's home and I get more free farm. Now, another point I want to bring up here. Invoker should almost always never be full on mana. Ever, ever, ever. You always want to be casting spells and forcing your opponent out of the lane. Forcing your opponent out of the lane gives you free gold, guaranteed EXP, no denying. And it, it's just, you know, you feel like a boss. But anyways, you always want to be casting spells. Like, notice there, when I, whenever I have a chance to harass an opponent, I do. And this kind of falls in the laning, and that's a whole other beast to tackle. But you want to auto-attack him as much as you can without pulling creep aggro. And that, that'll just whittle away. And then when he's at, like, 60%, you want to throw your combo out. Cold snap into tornado. You can do Tornado on the Cold Snap if you need to reposition yourself, but usually Cold Snap into Tornado. Do that, and you might get a kill. You might get a mix, or you... You might get a kill, or you might get him extremely low. Both are very good. If you get him extremely low, he either has to stay in lane, play extremely reserved, and potentially risk dying, or go back to the base, give you free farm, miss out on EXP, spend maybe 135 gold on a TP. So you really want to harass your opponent at every opportunity. And you're Invoker. It's not like you can't, okay? You want to spend that mana as Invoker. You don't want to be, you know, broke on mana because if I were to get ganked by Venge right now, notice I have 215 mana. That wouldn't be enough for a Ghost Walk. 240 mana is what I need for a Ghost Walk. So if Venge, like, walked up behind me, did some crazy bullshit, and, like, Undying was here and Sand King was here, I'd be boned. If I had 240 mana, I'd just see Venge and be like, well, fuck that, and Ghost Walk. And I'd do that later, but... Not now. So you can see I'm getting that free from getting that EXP. And I believe right now I'm out leveling Razor. Yep, by one level. One and a half. Let's check. Let's check. Yeah, about one level. It was just big mid, especially early. But he's gonna catch up there. He's gonna get seven off those creeps. And again, I'm playing kind of reserved because I don't know where Venge is. And I say fuck that. Push in the river. And I see Venge is bot with some illusions, so I'm like, oh, fuck this. I can be aggressive again. Sorry about that. I'm right here. I believe I buy my Mystic Staff. And there's a fight coming up top where I kind of solidify my role as a... Uh, not really the carrier of this game, but a huge Dyer's role in this game. Is under attack. So they gank bottom, you know, nothing I can really do about that. But then they try and come mid and get me. So I, I notice, like, where the hell is everyone? And I, I get back to tower. Then this is kind of stupid for me. I play kind of aggressive. I must have seen something. But here. Okay. Little fun fact. Use Ghost Walk. I mean, I've been I've been playing and streaming some games recently. And I've seen invokers play. And they they either don't know about Ghost Walk or don't like it. It's a guaranteed escape. I'd say 90% of the time you're going to get away with Ghost Walk. Unless you're super try-hard and have dust and everything. Or you have a bounty hunter on your team and they're trying to gank him. Whatever. But 
Ghost walk. Just fucking use the spell. It's expensive, yeah, but just do it. Okay? Just try and invoke it. Now, I want to point out another thing here. Let's set this down to one. How am I? I'm invinced? No, I'm not. Okay. Let's speed it up a bit. Please don't break. Okay. That didn't do anything. Dyer's bottom tower now, I want to point out something. Attack. This is just a little tip slash trick. You know, one of the many invoker possesses. Here. Okay. Right here. You might not know this, but Ghost Walk disjoints projectiles. Pretty sure it disjoints every single one. So you see right there, I was not stunned. Wasn't stunned, wasn't gonna get stunned, but I think I took the damage. Shit, I don't know. Whatever, I'm not gonna re rewind to find it out. So Ghost Walk disjoints projectiles. Just try and remember that. Like, I mean, first 10 games as Invoker, you're probably not gonna disjoint many stuns with Ghost Walk. It just requires kind of fast fingers and thinking on your feet. And in the first 10 games as Invoker, you're not going to be thinking on your feet. You're going to be struggling to remember what Tornado is, you know? You're going to be struggling with that. But just, just keep it in the back of your mind. That's another thing with Invoker. You have 10 spells, okay? See, these, these are all usable. Keep those in the back of your mind. Just know that you have 10 spells. Just know that. It really helps. Like, I'll, I'll use Ice Wall later on in here which I don't reg regularly use, but I use it because I was like, oh shit, I have more than three spells. But anyways, here's some good play by me. I just stick next to the Razor because I know he's going to Q soon. See, if I were far away, that would have killed me, but I'm sticking close to him and it doesn't kill me. So just good little plays right there. Head back to base because I'm really low. Now here's important. Here's the important fight. So shit's going down up top. I'm at base. I'm regening. Now, I need to get into this fight immediately, because look at them, you know, they're about to be, where's the third, yeah, it's about to be 3v2.5, so I need to get up there. Now, most people would TP here, just because, like, oh, tier 1 tower is up, might as well TP there. That'd be a bad idea. If I TP'd there, by the time I got here, the fight would be halfway over, I wouldn't have contributed much to it. Just wouldn't be worth it. However, I decided to TP to the tier 2 tower. This is just a little, you know, little little plays that stack up in the big plays later on. You always want to TP as close to the fight as possible. Always, always, always. Just because your tier 1 is up doesn't mean you have to TP to it, okay? So I noticed the fight going on, going on up top. I'm like, alright, I gotta get in there, I gotta kick some ass. I TP before I'm fully healed, that's fine. I just throw out a tornado here because he's long range. I want to get some damage on him and reposition him, finish him off with a cold snap, and it's just right click. So I try and stall my animation so I guarantee you get the last hit. I wanted that triple. There it is. And from this point on, I'm pretty much... I wouldn't call myself unbeatable. That's not a good word, but... From this point on, I do not see how I could fall down i i don't see how i could become less you know i'm contributing a lot to the game and i don't see how i'm going to contribute any less so that fight really like pushed me ahead and pushed our entire team ahead really and here undying tries to come in for some shit and he gets destroyed because come on so you know four kills from top that's pretty good zombies almost get me here zombies are pretty damn good but I just throw my claws on and I'm fine. But then everyone comes in and tries to kill me. And they do. Because I'm, I'm really low. And it's easy to die to me. Try to get the bench here. I think we do. I don't remember. Awesome. So here's another thing. I see a lot of invokers farming mid. Because that's kind of expected of them. Only because the meta has shifted to Quas Exort. Quas Exort, you want to farm mid. But again, that's Quas Exort. Quaswex, you want to leave mid. I see a lot of invokers farming mid, farming mid, even though they're going Quaswex. Quaswex, you want to leave the lane. Notice, I left the lane. I got five fucking kills, okay? That was extremely worth it, even if I did die in the end. That's like going up there and getting four kills and not dying, okay? Like, that's bad. Just leave your lane every once in a while. Try and get some gangs going. 
So here they get a kill. Two kills. But it's irrelevant, honestly. Buy in, buy in, buy in. I got my four staff now. So bigplays.com incoming. Let's fast forward and do this because nothing really happens. Now, okay. I notice things are going down bot. So I start to run down. I was like up here when they were around right here. So I notice and I start to run. As Quaswex Invoker, you can you can transcend the map in a very short amount of time. A very short amount of time. So do not feel like you have to TP everywhere. <clears throat> you can be top and make it bottom in like 30 seconds, I think. I don't know. A very short amount of time. Because you are fast as hell. So I see them shit going down bot. Throw out a tornado to hopefully save them. And here, I get the perfect ice wall off. He's overextended, and I want to keep him overextended. So I throw out the ice wall. He stays overextended. That gives me enough time to throw out those last hits. Or, or those auto attacks. Those right clicks. Get the kill. And here, I just farm up afterwards. So, nothing really happens. They try and get me. Nothing happens. I force stuff myself out. It's fine. <clears throat> Trying going again. I almost died when dying there because I don't know what in dying does. Or at least that game I didn't. And I think I go back. I'm not sure though. No, I had mid, right. Another point. Look at the range on Tornado. This is gonna hit. Just so you know. This is gonna hit. It's gonna hit two, I believe. Sand King and Darkseer. Tornado has a ridiculous range. If you see someone remotely close to you, like, Dro is not that far from me, cast Tornado and try and save him. The range on it is ridiculous. It is absolutely insane. It's 2800 right now. Max is 3200. I don't know how long that is. I think that's, like, almost half a lane. I don't know. All I know is that I don't... I My Tornadoes rarely fall short. And that's not me bragging. That's me saying... The range is ridiculous. So I throw out a tornado here to save my ally. I'm gonna slow this down. <clears throat> and right here, first EMP of the game, best EMP of the game. Look at this. Actually, no, it's the second best. But throw out the EMP. Wait, shit. Am I confused? I remember an EMP here. Clearly not your best. Oh, I'm confused. There's another team fight where I throw out an EMP. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, nothing really special there except the tornado save. Shit goes down here. I throw out an EMP because fuck you, Sam. Or same thing. Whoops. Fast forward, nothing happens, nothing happens. Now, a thing that I ran into, this is a flaw of probably... I want to say my item build, but how I play in general. I'm very happy-go-lucky with my spells. Notice my mana, 68 of 900. Okay? I'm casting them spells. And... I You always want to keep a mana pool with Invoker. You always want to be able to cast something. You never want to be empty on mana, because an Invoker that's empty on mana is useless. Unless you're Quas Exhort. Which case you are severely detrimented. Or... Fuck, I can't think of a better word. I don't know. It's not good. You don't want to be low on mana, ever. And this is due to me just playing kind of greedy, casting a lot of spells. Like, I, I remembered in this game, if I had mana in other circumstances, I would have been able to get kills easy. I'm gonna take a drink, excuse me. <clears throat> so nothing happened. Nothing's gonna happen for a bit. So I decided to hold down mid a bit. Bottom tower has fallen. And I see they're trying to come in at me. Dyer's now here. Tower is under attack. <clears throat> okay, maybe not here. God damn it, where's that fight? I got another EMP because fuck you, Sand King. Dyer's bottom really tower hate when that happens. Bottom tower has Nothing really happening here. I think something's about to happen, bot. But just farming, trying to get that EXP, trying to get that, that gold. I don't know if I mentioned this, but EXP is more important than gold on Invoker. It, it really is. <clears throat> so here they're grouping up, trying to play that five-man Dota. And here's the fight. Here's where I get off... Oh, here, let me slow it down. Get off a pretty good tornado here. I think I hit three? Yeah, I hit those three in the cluster. Throw out that EMP, and... This is gonna hurt. 
Look at that mana. Look at the mana. 400, 600, well, 90, and 587. Play it. Oh, they died so fast. It's 200. She gained mana somehow. Oh, I know. Yeah, arcane boots. So that's kind of null, but... The point I'm trying to make is, this fucker lost, like, 200 mana. He lost, like, Jesus, like, 500. And she gained mana, but whatever. And Sand King died. The point I'm trying to make here is, EMP is imbalanced. Especially against mana-dependent heroes. Like, Sand King and Undying. I remember I was playing an Undying game where Invoker did nothing but throw EMPs on me. I wanted to punch the wall. Because I never had mana. It was so infuriating. So use EMP. It's a really good spell. And that EMP just sets up the victory for the rest of the fight. Uh, I get undy Undying here with some four staff. Nothing special. Uh, get back on my... There we go. Throw out that drum charge. A lot of people don't know drum is an active item. You can use it. So try and remember that. Try and use it. It'll give you a small amount of movement speed and small amount of attack speed. And here I go for my point booster. Now, an 18-minute point booster is kind of ridiculous. It's a little silly. <clears throat> I don't get my Agnums until, like, 30 minutes. Only because we siege mid, and it's kind of silly. I don't get that much farm. And then I point out this shitty ward, because look at that ward. It's fucking awful. So fast forward. I think we decided to push Radiance mid. Invisibility. Fuck, I hate doing that. Okay. Nothing really happens. They go in on this guy. I throw out a tornado to try and help. And immediately, I force F myself in the tower range. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, now, here. Yeah, I get swapped, force F myself back in the tower range. Always use force F when you're scared. Just do it. Just fucking do it. You can escape on your own. Just use force F if you're scared. Here, it's just, you know, right click, haven. No, no real good spells. Nothing special. So, I really only want to show one more fight, really. We push mid, we, we start to siege it, and you know, nothing special. Oh yeah, one little point. Alacrity's really good. Really good on Quas Wex Invoker. On Quas Exhort, it's whatever. I mean, it gives a lot of bonus damage, but it gives, like here. It'll give you 80 bonus damage, that's cool and all, but 80% bonus attack speed is ridiculous. And it is imbalanced on people like Luna. And oh, Drill Ranger for that matter. So, nothing special here. Just Haste. regening, getting map control, doing things like that. I invoke Tornado because why not? Dyer's Throw that Tornado, hold snap, kill. Nothing special. Again, Tornado has ridiculous range. Make use of it. Throw Alacrity onto your carries. It's imbalanced. Now, here, I believe? Yes. Here, I get... This just showcases the power of EMP. Now, there are four people in this fight. Three of which are about to become completely nullified and useless. I throw out a Tornado. And instantly, throw an EMP right there. Because that's kind of a hot spot. I mean... Either Darkseer goes back to base and just sits there, or he runs to the EMP. And ev same deal with everyone else. Either run back or run through the EMP. It's a really good spot for the EMP. EMP. Try and always place it so it's like that. You either have to stay out of the fight, or run through the EMP to get to you. Well, let's take note. Actually, she uses some spells. So, let's see. 400 mana. 448 mana. 416 mana. Darkseer has 441 mana. Now, if you know how much EMP does, how much mana it burns, you probably know what's going to happen. EMP goes off. No mana. No mana. No mana. These three people are useless. They cannot contribute anything to the fight. They can try. They will not succeed. Even Undying, who is, like, hell-bent on keeping his mana this game, still only has, like, 400 mana. Is that enough to do what he needs to? Yeah. But still, that's not a lot of mana. If AM were here, he'd get ulted up the ass. So, the point I'm trying to make is EMP is ridiculous to me. It's absolutely disgusting. And from here, it's just seizing, seizing mid. Nothing really special. That was a team fight I wanted to show. I think we get a few hits. I want to make a point on that. 
top tower. Radiance top tower. Okay. Radiance top tower so here, has... I believe it's here, we get some kills. <clears throat> and at this point I was thinking, okay, we can't really push into these guys. You can't really push into a Dark Seer and a Sand King and a Vengeful and an Undying, kind of. You can't do it. It's not going to happen unless you're ridiculously out farming them, which we kind of are. We're out farming them, but not to that point where we can just run in, right click, and win. If we lose like three fights, the game's even again. All of a sudden, it's even. We could potentially lose at that point. You do not want to throw away a game just by getting overzealous and pushing too early. You want to push safe, you want to play safe, you want to play smart. Like, I think Sing Sing calls it MTW Dota, where they get a lead and they keep that lead. No matter how boring the game gets, they take that lead and give it a nice stranglehold and keep it until they win. Okay? Make it boring at times, but they win. They're winning. That's the only point that matters. Except they didn't win in the international, too. But that's irrelevant. Fallen. So here, I think we go for Rush. I'm not sure. I know we go for it soon. And then sieging mid. We get a kill on Dark Sea Pod because he's bad at this game. Oh, another point I want to make. Um, your orbs do things. I don't know if people know that. <clears throat> They're not just there to cast spells. Your orbs do things. So, if you're out of the fight, throw on Quas. Even if you're like Wex Exhort for some dumbass reason, throw on Quas. You know, regen that HP. There's no reason you need Wex. There's no reason you need Exhort. Just throw on that Quas, regen that EXP. I mean, HP, and it's going to be fine. Same deal with Wex. If you need to get somewhere, don't have Exhort up. There's no point. Don't have Quas up. There's no point if you're at decent HP. Get that Wex. Get to the fight earlier. All I'm saying is, use your orbs outside of battle. They do things. So here, I this is where we do rush. Now I push out mid. <clears throat> here. Shit, that was fast. Whatever, it was a stomp anyways. Here, they push out for no reason. We immediately take advantage of that, and this is kind of where the game ends. Get a kill on Benji, nothing special. Now I've... But then, is this a... Can we oh, fucking do Rosh ready? Oh my god, that's so much. So I get that DD. Double damage. Try and push out mid some more. Just keep in mid push, keep in mid sieged. So they can't do anything else other than defend mid. <clears throat> also, I'm playing so upfront and aggressive like that. Because I'm Quas Wex Invoker. I can get away from fucking anything, okay? Nothing special, just continuing the siege mid. I think it's here. We actually finally go for Roshan. Yeah, we throw at that ice wall, and we go for Rosh. Getting Rosh means we have a get out of jail free card. We have a free push. We can fuck up the push, and you know it'll be, it'll be kind of remedied. And the fact that we'll have our carry come back to life, or our important person come back to life. And after we get Rosh, the game's practically over because the only thing that was keeping them in the game was the fact that they had really good turtling ability. Rosh kind of negates that. We can just kind of run in and suicide. Not do that for baby, but no. So if fight goes on, we destroy him, you know, pick up some kills and whatever. The rest of the game from here on out is just me being crafty, avoiding dying, but that's basically the gist of Quas Wex Invoker. I didn't really go over items because it's kind of, um... Not clockwork, but it's the same thing pretty much every game. You want to go phase boots in the four staff, in the drums, into agonims all the time. After that, it's irrelevant what you get. Pass that as luxury. You know, build according to the game. As for skill build, I maxed Wex this game because EMP was really good against the team. Usually, I'd go for a balanced Wex Quas build, and I advise you do that as well. Max out Quas, more max out Wex first, then Quas, then Exhort. Get one point of exhort, you know, for the miscellaneous abilities. But other than that, that is it. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.